Hello Rootubers, it's Herman Monster here. Um, long time lurker, I've posted a few snapshots recently of homebrew days and stuff, but this is my first sort of foray into being a, a brew tuber. Um, I have watched numerous videos from you guys, well, new to homebrew Tom, hapless ginger, stas, I mean, not just from the Facebook brew tubers, but also just the general brew tubing community. Um, and always kind of put off the idea of doing one of these because who needs to see another guy with a beard spilling hot water on himself in his kitchen but um, it's kind of more for me to get involved with the, with the wider sort of brew tube community and hopefully set up some bottle swaps and things like that down the line for, for my beers and while well, not necessarily wanting to be a review site I'm more than happy to give some feedback on beers and ultimately would like some feedback on mine too so that's kind of my impetus for doing this um, I sort of discovered the, the Brewtubers whole thing by sending a bottle of beer out to Big Banana last year, it was probably about summertime, I sent him a raspberry wheat beer and if any of you guys follow Big Banana it was the luminous blood looking thing that he got, looked like a cloudy raspberry coloured mess. Um, so from that um, Big Banana had, had sort of asked him about the community and he so it basically a good in he sort of accepted my invite or whatever so thanks for that big banana um, let me know how you get on with that beer I sent you the Centennial IPA I'm not expecting you to put it up for a full review but if you want to drop me some feedback on what you thought of it much appreciated um, so my background is I've been home brewing on and off for about 5 or 6 years I'm originally from Northern Ireland but moved to Scotland back in 2006 and shortly after I moved um Brewdog opened their, their bar in Edinburgh and you know always a fan of beer but this sort of opened up access to a lot of import beers like American brewers and stuff like that stuff we couldn't ordinarily get on draft certainly not back home and certainly not not at that time and while Edinburgh had a good real ale scene the whole camera thing and stuff um, I wasn't getting access to those sort of American beers now don't get me wrong I'm not a I'm not a massive Brewdog fanboy I did buy shares back in the day um, but I really went there for accessing the guest beers and the stuff that I couldn't just couldn't find. So I got involved with the whole share thing with Brewdog and sort of it was kind of my local. Anytime I was in town, I'd always go and check out the beers. And you know, I think the craft scene kind of lends itself to home brewing because people get involved and they want to explore more flavors. And that was that was kind of my in. Um, so I eventually got myself a Cooper's. Cooper's can of dry air stout um, and a fermenting bucket. Uh, made some beer in my kitchen, fermented it in a spare room at probably too high a temperature. And a few weeks later, my buddies and I were drinking home brew. We thought it was okay, it was good, you know, it was it wasn't as good as some of the stouts we'd had. It was better than water, <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, but in the time of making that and the time of doing a bit of research and reading about fermentation and stuff, I quickly realised that, you know, sticking a bucket in a fluctuating room which goes up to 22 degrees one afternoon and then zero degrees at night wasn't really going to be that good for the whole process and I think I was picking up out, picking out off flavours at that stage and trying to figure out what was causing them or what where they were coming from and clearly it was a fermentation thing so, so I kind of backed off the homebrew thing a little bit because I knew I couldn't make the beer as well as I could because I was lacking a few simple bits of equipment which you know it never occurred to me to buy okay so fast forward then I moved house I'm a renter so you know I've lived in a couple of different properties since I started this whole homebrew in Lark so yeah I moved into a property and we had a store cupboard type thing which sat perfectly at 18 degrees it was in a, an old tenement building so it was ideal I thought for fermenting so ditched the can thing got myself a little one gallon all green kit I started doing that on my stove top um, made a couple of those went to the local home brew store here in Edinburgh and they, they were doing one gallon all green kits so I tried a couple of those um, was able to go back to the shop and say hey what do you think of this how does it taste is this how it's meant to taste because again I, I felt you know my process was getting better but the fermentation thing was probably mucking up the final recipe or the final flavor um, so I went to a few homebrew clubs, continued to make some, some homebrew, you know, alcoholic ginger beers and things like that. Found some 
wild hops growing in allotment so we sort of try to forge those and make beers out of them and things so but then again the stumbling block for me was the whole fermentation thing and my home brew um my home brew sort of slowed down a little bit because again i wanted to make it i knew i could make it better if i had one or two little bits of equipment so i then moved into another house where i was able to get my hands on a an old cheap secondhand fridge an ink bird you know a heat mat i hadn't, I hadn't really been doing an awful lot of research into that whole side of things in terms of what i needed or where to get it but i just knew that's what i needed to do and the time eventually came where i i was able to get those little sort of pieces to the puzzle so around that time as well i'd sold some of my brewdog share i bought brewdog shares 10 years ago or something seven eight years ago and i was able to use the money that i got from the shares i sold by a grandfather so it was really like a natural kind of time to get the fridge and the, the heat belt and the, the, you know, the ink bird and all this sort of stuff so i was able to have a really good process i thought you know the grandfather allowed me some consistency in that process and then the fermenting fridge allowed me to make you know very controlled temperature changes or maintain temperatures and such you know we've all been there we've all we've, we've all done the kit you know we've all bought the cans and moved all grain um, naturally enough the next thing I looked at was kegs because I was bottling my beer I was only making you know two gallon batches three gallon batches not a whole lot but um, it was really, it was really we all know it's a ball ache bottling beer you know what I mean especially if you're making any sort of volume so got a mini keg that was really good for me it was great you know you could put all your beer in one place and serve it dispense it so I remember I got that around about at Christmas a couple of years ago as I had a beer waiting to go into it and we had a New Year's Eve party and I was able to dispense my own beer like you know, that's, that's the goal isn't it when you're home brewing and you can serve beer from a keg to your friends it's great so yeah I, I got myself a proper grown up size keg and I'll do small I'll do small brews um, ferment them out in little one gallon demijohns and then put them into the, the mini keg to try those and then if I'm making a batch of something I, I know I like I'll generally do a bigger batch and keg that and the big keg probably going to pick up another keg quite soon actually because I think my problem with my home brews as well as initially trying to get the fermentation right I was just trying them too early you know I was I would make it and wait on it and you're you get there you're sort of at every stage of the process and you might you know it says two weeks to ferment then you're at it after two weeks whereas really you should be kind of chilling out leaving it well enough alone and letting it do its job so so yeah having the having the an extra keg means it can always have something on the go and give beer proper time to develop or mature or you know, let the green hop flavor settle out or whatever whatever it happens to be so fast forward till today i have been brewing much more frequently i'll try and brew once a month um, sometimes twice a month if uh, I got a second fermenting I've got a couple of fermenting vessels so um, I can now sort of keep one keep up keep both of them temperature regulated so that's great um, so in my brewing sort of background I have brewed a lot of stouts a lot of northeast IPAs New England IPAs um, not really brewed a lot of the classic things I recently have done a brown ale and I've got an ESB yeast which I'm going to use on an ESB I've got a Belgian ale I'm going to use for something slightly Belgian um, but just before Christmas I had a couple of, a week off before a night shift or whatever so I brewed I brewed a couple of um, beers then I have a, a Kolsch which I've made and it's you know it's worked out at six percent not four percent but hey yeah, I'll, I'll not water it down I'll just leave it as it is for now and, and see how it goes and I've done a single hopped IPA with Centennial and then I've also just kegged a single hopped IPA with Simcoe so you know it's not new or inventing the wheel but reinventing the wheel but for me I've not really made a lot of single hop beers so I was always keen to do the Nipa style things get the big juicy dank bombs and all that dank juice bombs or whatever so it's really interesting to go back and use a single hop and I think my enthusiasm for brewing I wanted to jump in with both feet and make everything you know that's a hip and modern and de rigueur whereas really it's nice to be able to sit back and just appreciate a particular hop varietal and see what it does what it brings to the table so Centennial was really good for that um, Big Banana has a bottle of it which if he wants to review it, Big Banana go ahead stick it online let me know what you think but you know I just hope you enjoy the beer and 
let me know how it went if you, if you thought it was tasty or what changes you think would be useful because I'm always happy, to, always happy to get feedback so the Simcoe single hop IPA was just kegged yesterday and hopefully in three or four weeks it should be optimal drinking so same with the culture I'm going to try and lager it for three or four weeks so if anyone wants to try a bottle get in touch by PM or DM or whatever whatever you kids are calling it these days and we'll get a bottle swap set up if you want me to review your beer online my palate's okay I mean I can pick out some flavours and things so I'm more than happy to do that and likewise if you want to get some beer and review it do a bottle swap let me know even if it's just a comment on the, the Facebook YouTube group or if you want to post it in a video as an official beer review be my guest all I ask is for honest you know open and honest feedback please don't <laughs> cut me down because of my shoddy practice it's all still a bit of a learning thing right now so uh, but yeah that's one of the reasons why I've set up this this channel here on YouTube is to um, be part of the wider community like I say I've watched watched videos from you guys many of you guys um, not really knowing about the brew tube Facebook thing so um, I hope I can make some contributions to that and you know I'm not not a pro prolific user of Facebook or, or that but it's sort of forcing me in to keep up to date with what's happening and um, you know if any research is going down any new techniques or any new tips any hop varieties which are particularly worth a look at you know stick them in the links below and I'll keep up to date on the Facebook as well um, some of the things I'm looking at for 2019 is trying more of the sort of traditional yields like Belgian stuff I'm not really familiar with. I've tried it, I've drank them, I've been in Belgium, I've drank their beers but never really made them so that's something to look at. Try some Belgian beers. Probably look at a bit more lagering as well because who doesn't like a well made lager? Especially when the summer comes. Um, probably lay off the darker beers in the New England style. I'm going to focus more on the West Coast style IPAs, hitting around about 40-50 IBUs for this single hop thing I'm talking about. I'll maybe make one of those every month or every other month. Um, Sipra is probably going to be my next one, I think. We end up making like a zombie dust clone or something, but, uh, but we'll see what happens. And yeah, water treatments as well. Water here in Edinburgh is pretty soft, so I think it's quite, quite susceptible. Well, it's, well, it's quite neutral, so I can, it gives me a lot of range to play with different water profiles. Oh, if you use brewing software, Brew Smith or Brew Father or whatever, stick a link below. Let me know what you've used, how you found it. My setup is a Grandfather just now, so I've been using the Grandfather app. Uh, I think that might account for some of the spurious readings I've had, and I ended up with higher, higher gravities and things. I think there's been an update recently which has fixed that. But yeah, if you're using if you're using the Grandfather, especially, uh, let me know what your profile is for Brew Father or Beer Smith or whatever, because I'm not sure if I need to set up one profile. For a five gallon, one profile for four gallon, one profile for three gallon, or I can just use like a sliding scale on that. I really need to download it and have a look. But yeah, comment below, let me know what you're using, let me know what your setup is, and um, how you got involved. I'm always happy to uh, reach out and have some conversations with folk. Um, yeah, so my brewing history has been a bit stop start, but this last year probably I've, I've made a conscious decision to be a bit more proactive and. Um, made imperial stouts you know all the usual stuff we try out uh fruit based wheat beers things like that um so yeah i'll finish up by saying thanks for listening if you've been reading please subscribe um, i think you can hit a bell or something now everyone else seems to say this so i feel like i should say it if you press a bell when i post a new video you'll get a vibration in your pants i don't think that's how it works um i look forward to chatting with you guys on the bluetooth page and feel free to chime in and offer any advice or tips if you think this is a rambling nonsense, I'm always quite happy to get some direction. Um, next video will probably be along in three or four weeks. I'll be looking at the coach, how that's turned out. I'll be looking at the Simcoe IPA, how that's turned out. And I'll probably have a brew day video because that's going to free up my fermenter. So, or some of the fermenters. So that's, that's, that looks like another brew day towards the end of the month. If you have any suggestions of what you think I should brew, any any beer styles you haven't made yet, or something you think I should, uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'm sure we can get like yeah. So I've got an ESB, ESB, so I'll probably do an ESB. So if you've got any suggestions of a good recipe, if you want to guide me, um, or some commercial beers, or some 
some beers that are out there in the ESV style worth trying. I'm familiar with fillers and things like that, but if you've got any recommendations, hit me up below and we can have a chat about it next time. So, thanks for listening. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I hope to hear from you all soon. Have a good one.